come around and uh, get seated at my desk here. Put this thing on the tripod. All right, so anyone in the chat, um, let me know how my audio is and how my video is, because it's hard for me to monitor this when I'm doing it myself. Thank you guys all so much for your uh, for your support and, 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 and nice messages. It's, it's a great feeling to hit 100,000. <laughs> Okay, cool. Wow. I'm surprised how many people are here. There's already a ton of people in the chat. Thank you guys so much for coming. This is amazing. I've never done one of these live streams before, so this is all new to me. Um, I'm using my phone to do the stream because I need my laptop to do the chat. And then, I don't know, maybe next time I'll figure out a better way to do it. But Thank you guys all very much. I see so many nice messages here. I really appreciate it. Looks like Dork in the Road's here. Hey, Ben. See a lot of familiar names. Rebel Canuck, he's a great supporter. Always comments, always supports the channel. See who else is here. Jose, uh, I, I know that name. He's, he's always on the videos. See who else. Oh, someone, do you, okay, the super chat is working. I thank you. I just turned that feature on. So thank you, Orlando, for that. So the super chat is a way you can basically donate to the channel uh, by using the chat and then I'll answer these questions. I'll prioritize these questions. So Orlando donated $5. Thank you. Um, have I pre-ordered the Desert X? No, but I'm strongly considering that. But I, I currently own two adventure bikes that are very similar and I'm going to take you out to the garage here in a few minutes and show you. Um, otherwise I probably would, but I don't know how many adventure bikes I need. I kind of want like a sport bike, honestly. Okay. Let me go through the comments here. Wow. I can't believe we've got over a hundred people here. This is really awesome. Carl will be celebrating a million soon. Well, <laughs> I don't want to have, I don't want to say I've done the math on that. I don't think we're going to hit a million for a long time if we go at this rate. But anyway, that's, that's a fun thing to think about. Uh, we're going to talk about the Norden. So Drift Flyer says, what's the latest info on the Norden? So I sold the Norden and we're going to kind of talk about why, but I bought something very similar to replace it. Seth says he has a Multistrada V4S. That's a bike that I've really been considering too. Um, I really want to test ride one of those. Do I still have my Tenere 700? Uh, no, I sold that like, gosh, that was, I haven't had that for like four months, five months, something like that. Cause I sold that to get the Norden. Swabby says you look good on a Z900 SE. I really like that Z900. That was one of my favorite bikes I've tested this past year. I'm not a huge inline four cylinder person, but I still really like that bike. Uh, why have you never done a KTM 1290 Super Adventure? KTM does not give me test bikes. I'm working on that and hopefully that'll, that'll start, but I don't get press bikes from KTM. Have I heard anything about a 490 Adventure? Uh, yeah, I've only heard rumors, nothing, nothing that I would really trust. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that's, that's going to happen. But if, if we see them do like a 500 CC engine, like in a Duke or anything else, then you can bet that they're going to put, probably put that in an adventure bike, but they do have the 390. So I'm not sure. Uh, have I reviewed the Himalayan? Um, I've ridden Himalayans a few different times. I've never done a review video. I've tried to work with Royal Enfield to get a press bike, but that hasn't come through yet. Um, I do have friends that have them so I can do the review on it. I just felt like so many people have already done that, have covered that bike that I, it just wasn't my big priority for me. Everyone kind of knows what it is. I do think it's a great bike though. 
Uh, what do you know about the new BMW GS 1300? I actually truly don't know anything more than you guys do. So I've actually tried to ask my contacts at BMW and they've been super quiet about it. They won't say a word. So I'm not sure, but I think in the next year, in the next 12 months, either as a 23 model year or a 24 model year, there's going to be a new GS because the, the current GS has been with the same platform for almost 10 years. And that's a pretty long time for BMW. That came out in 2013. Uh, that the basic chassis let me scroll through some more comments here thank you guys for all these nice comments i really appreciate it uh, long-term Touareg 660 review yeah that's something i'd like to do and i've thought about buying one but again I, I already have two adventure bikes that are all set up so i don't really want to spend the cash to buy a Touareg although it's one of my favorite bikes right now uh, i would love to do that um and so far, I haven't seen any of the big YouTubers who bought one, so we don't really have a lot of information about it. Do I still have my Africa Twin? Uh, yeah, so I've had, I've had three different Africa Twins. That's where it's confusing. I had a 2017, then I had another 2017. It was a different color. And then I, now I have the 2022 with the gold wheels, the Adventure Sports version. And I'm doing some videos on that now. It's just not released yet. But in a minute, we're going to go outside. I'm going to show you guys the... Uh, my new bike and also the Africa Twin. I have, oh, Dave says I have a Grand America coming into the dealer. Yeah, the K1600 Grand America. So I rode that bike up to the Sierra Nevadas. I rode it for like on a four day trip, which I never do on the press bikes. The engine is amazing. It's one of the most amazing engines I've ever ridden. Um, the rest of the bike I have some ups and downs about, but we're gonna have to get into that, into that later. The V85, Greg says, the V85 needs to be unpacked by you, someone we trust. So many cliche assumptions. Yeah, you know, the only really good in-depth review I read on the V85, I think it was someone from ADV Pulse, I forget his name, but he did an article online about the V85 TT and it was really good and he covered a lot of stuff, so you might want to go look for that. But that's a really nice bike, actually, and it's shaft drive, so that's rare. Uh, let's see. Uh, next one is supposed to be 500 cc for the Himalayan. Yeah, all those Royal Enfield rumors—they're really—they're just fake news. I don't, that's not from Royal Enfield. I don't think that's happening. Do you review sport bikes or only adventure bikes? I review all kinds of bikes. I don't typically do like pure sport bikes, but I do sport touring bikes and standard bikes and street bikes as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, how was the new 2022 CB 500X? So. They changed the suspension. I just uh, edited that video today, actually. It's coming out probably Monday, next Monday, a week from today. So they changed the suspension, they changed the brakes, and it's a lot better with those things, but the bike is still kind of the same. So it doesn't it doesn't make it like more capable, really. It just rides a little better and brakes are a little stronger. But other than that, it's the same, which is a, still a great bike. I'm gonna have a drink here. It's not beer, by the way. I don't actually drink, but I like Coke Zero, so. I don't know if I'm using this chat right. There's so many messages I can't keep up. Um, I think the new ones are at the bottom. Uh, more nice messages. Let's see. The World Raid Edition on the T7. Yeah, that it's a bigger gas tank. They have a TFT screen. I think the suspension is better, but they still don't have cruise control. or And I don't think they have traction control, and that kind of bugs me. But other than that, it's amazing. I don't think it's coming to the USA, though, which is a huge bummer. Uh, Driftless Rider, any chance you'll get on an Indian? Yes, I, I hope to be working with Indian soon. Uh, and actually, I should announce that I just formalized my kind of uh, agreement with Harley. Not agreement, but just they've opened up their uh, demo fleet to me, Harley Davidson. So I'm picking up the Pan America this week. So that's something people have been asking for for a long time. Uh, why is no one making a true rally bike? Uh, because not enough people would buy it to make it profitable. Why did you get the manual, not the dual clutch on the Africa Twin? Um, I was worried that the dual clutch wouldn't be as much fun to ride, um, even though technically I think it's better in a lot of situations. I think that's my short answer. And I got the quick shifter, which works really, really well. So what, Tusk Penny Arax on the uh, Africa Twin over Outback. Um, I got a better deal on the Tusk, I'll just be honest. Uh, I, Rocky Mountain is very generous and we've got a better deal on the Tusk racks. The Outback racks are great too. Um, 
The 22 CP500X video, uh, Mike says, asked that. That's coming a week from today. I just edited that today. Uh, Dork in the Road says, what's your secret for growing your channel? Aside from the good content, give a smaller channel some tips. Well, you're, you're a big channel, uh, Ben. <laughs> um, you're not small. Um, my, my theory has always been to look at, I really dig deep into the data, try to see what videos are working. I read everything to see what people like. I look in the marketplace to see uh, what are trending topics, what are trending bikes, and I try to make videos towards that. So I don't really make videos that I personally am interested in all the time, but it's videos that I think that are the most important topic or bike at the time. Um, so I don't know. And I've tried to improve my quality as well. But that we could we could get into that. Um, there's so many different things. Uh, but, I, but I think you're on the same trajectory. You'll be at 100,000 probably next year. Uh, let's see. Will BMW ever make an automatic bike? I don't think so. I think that's really just going to be Honda. How is the Africa Twin comparing to your GS experience? It's a lot different. Um, it's a lot different. It's not as, it's a much less expensive bike and it's not as nice. I mean, honestly, it just is not as nice. It's not as premium, doesn't go, it's not as fast, it's not as refined, but it does everything very well. Off-road, it's better than a GS. And I have a video coming out about that. Off-road, it's a lot better than a 1250 GS, in my a personal opinion. On the road, it's not as good as a GS, not even close, really. Uh, let's see. Uh, thank you, Mandrel, for a donation, it looks like. If you have a question, you can post that up. It's looking like someone else made a donation. Um, yeah, nothing to prove on the V85. Yeah, I love that channel. You guys should check him out. Nothing to prove is a YouTube channel. He does really good bike reviews that are kind of similar to my style. I think you guys would like him. Oh, Mob City Motos here. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Have you considered a tech day for all your bikes? Um, I have thought about that. I just haven't had the time. That, that'd be fun, but I mean, I can't have like 100 people show up at the house. That's, that's not going to be good. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you guys for all the comments. I'm trying to get through the chat here. Yeah, my daughter. I'm going to try to bring uh, my daughter Sierra into the video if we have time. And my wife too. My wife's name is Maggie. Uh, Pete says, I have a Pan Am. I hope you like it. I, you know, I've ridden them and, and they're, they're exciting. They're, I really like riding them. There was just a few details that I wanted to have more time to evaluate, but I think I'm going to like it. Uh, let's see. So someone, Dork is saying something about viewers or likes. I don't, so is 200 people low? Should I, I don't know how, how these live streams work or how to promote it. Um, Someone else made a donation. Let's see, trying to answer that question. Oh, Larry, thank you, Larry, for your donation. That's really, really nice. So Mob City Moto says, yeah, good question about growing the channel. Um, yeah, that's we could do a whole video about that, right? Like how YouTubers can grow. Um, I do a lot of homework. I do a lot of research. I do a lot of SEO. I do, um, I just focus on the technical side of, side of it a lot. And I, I treat the whole thing like a business. Um, so I don't know. And I review a variety of bikes. I think that's maybe part of the answer is I review a lot of different kinds of bikes. And that's, for me, that's a way to diversify the audience. That's a business strategy for me. Yeah, congrats, Ben, for hitting 50,000. That's a big, that's a big, it wasn't that long ago that I was at 50,000. So, I mean, I'm telling you, 100,000 comes up fast. Let's see. Fire Mer says, have you ridden the Super Tenere? I haven't ridden the newer ones, but I, I used to own a Super Tenere way back, way before my YouTube channel. I had one when they first came out and I found it to be very top heavy, just very heavy overall, but it was a really good touring bike and incredibly reliable shaft drive. It's very underrated. It's very good if you want like a big adventure bike for long distance riding, carrying passengers. Off-road, uh, I didn't think it was very good. What made you go for the Africa Twin over the 900 Rally Pro? <sighs> yeah, that was probably that was probably my second choice was a 900 Rally Pro. I really like that Triumph. I think uh, the looks, I for me, I love the way the Africa Twin looks with that color scheme. That's a huge part of it for me. I know it's kind of silly, but I just really like the way it looks. And I think the Africa Twin has a better value. You get better technology for the money. You get the electronic suspension. 
you get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Tiger doesn't have any of that and it costs the same. Uh, Tiger has, I mean, the Africa Twin has a bit more torque with the 1100, so I don't want to spend too long on that topic, but yeah, that's a good question. Can I have your BMW 1250 GS? So I sold it to a very nice gentleman from Alabama. I don't know if he's watching. Uh, a guy named Joe, super nice guy. He flew out. I picked him up at the airport. He rode it home. Oh, Moto is Moto Camp Nerd here? That's awesome. Um, let's see. Trying to get through these chat messages. You come across very honest and straight to the point. I try. I try to. Thank you. The Benelli, I don't know enough about the Benellis. I really can't answer that. I'd, I'd like to get more into that. Also, what is the company CF Moto? Everyone asked me about that. I just don't know enough about it. Okay, I'm going through the chats here. Um, so yeah, I did put up on the screen kind of what I wanted to do. Now that there's enough people watching, and if you're watching this on a recording uh, later, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting this channel. It means a ton to me. I never thought, this is crazy that I'm able to do this. Just crazy. I'm so grateful. And I, I, I feel like it's a privilege, right, to be able to do it. So if you're watching, thank you for your support, getting the channel to this point. And thank all of you. Like all your comments and engagement and chats and messages and feedback. That's what, this is a community. It's not about me really. It's about all of us interacting and I put forth a video and then we all talk about the, the content and the bike. And that's, to me, that's, it doesn't work without that. So all of you are really the reason. Um, and then, yeah, I wanted to, we're going to go outside and we're going to look at the new bike to replace the Norden and we'll talk kind of about future content and Q and A is ongoing. I've been doing Q and A for the first 15 minutes already. Um, I'm going to watch how many people are watching and kind of see if it keeps growing. When it starts to drop off, then we'll look at that. I don't want to go for like three hours like some people do. That's too long. Uh, maybe an hour or something like that. Let's see. Your reviews feel honest and not like sponsored marketing. Yeah, and you know, that's a very tough thing to maintain because as you become a bigger YouTuber, a lot of companies want to send you products, um, but, but the problem is that well, first of all, it's hard to say no to free stuff. Um, and if you get free stuff, it's actually not free. They want something in return. And so you're, then you start chasing all of these videos and stuff you have to do as an obligation for getting free stuff. So it's a huge dilemma. I don't know the answer. Um, it's a challenge for me. Like I've taken a few things that I probably shouldn't have in retrospect, but I, I really just want to do reviews and unbiased content as much as I can. But uh, yeah, it, it's a dilemma we face as creators. Like companies want to send us stuff. Where do you find that balance? And they want you to say good things, especially if they give you something valuable. So uh, let's see. Steve says, have you had any close call with wild wildlife? Oh, I thought you said wildfire. Um, but yeah, wildlife, yes, actually. I've actually hit a deer in my car before and almost totaled my car a few years ago. I hit a deer and I've had a lot of close calls with deer on a motorcycle. Some of my scariest close calls uh, have been with deer at high, at high speed and it's really something that every time I think every time I ride like this time of day like later in the day at, at dawn and, and or dusk uh, I'm very worried about deer thank you Pete for the nice comment that's very I really appreciate that how can I send you money right now like the other guys so yeah there's a little below the chat window there should be something that said there's a little dollar sign uh, it's by, there's a little graph button next to it. There's a smiley face. The, there should be a dollar sign. And it says, uh, show your support or give thanks. It's, it's super chat. So you can ask a paid question and make a donation through YouTube. But you have to be logged into your Google account or your YouTube account to do that. Let's see. You can uh, also, I added a feature on my regular videos now where you can give thanks. So instead of, some people don't want to go to Patreon. So now you can donate directly via the YouTube video, just a couple bucks if you like a certain video. I don't think it's not like a recurring gift like Patreon is. Could you uh, comment? Oh, I'm gonna answer this question. Alberto says, buy a GSA or wait for the 1300. 
I mean, if you don't need a bike right now, I would wait for the new GS. That's the position I'm in. So I'm definitely, I'm 99% buying the new GS when it comes out because personally I want it, but also I think it's gonna be important for me as a YouTuber to have that bike to make extended content with because the new GS is gonna be a huge, a huge thing, right? Um, hasn't been updated in 10 years. So, well, major update anyway. They did the 1250 in 2019. So I would wait if you can. Um, Mike says, could you comment on Itchy Boots? I love Itchy Boots. I think the channel, uh, her her genuine uh, passion for what she does, her travels, and the way she also runs her business and runs her content is so classy and wonderful. And I think it inspires people to go out and have an adventure. It's a very different kind of channel than mine. She doesn't like review bikes, right? She, it's a more of a travel vlog when it, that involves motorcycling, right? It's a way to travel. And it's awesome. I, I, I love it, you know. Have you fully recovered from getting hacked? Um, yeah, that, that was a huge disruption, but yeah, I fully recovered. Thank you for that. Journalist versus YouTuber. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd like to, I'd, I, I want to be more of a journalist than a YouTuber or a blogger. That's my goal. But that's, that's a difficult thing to put into action um, because YouTube wants videos all the time. That's how the algorithm works. They want us to feed the monster that is social media and you know, doing 40 minute videos once a week is, is not really as good for the algorithm as doing shorter blogs three times a week uh, or writing articles or doing things like that. So it's a tough thing to balance, I, I don't know. We're up to 250 people, that's awesome. Uh, let me kind of reposition this a little bit. I feel like I'm not looking at the camera. Uh, let's see. Oh, the video about riding after having kids. Yeah, that that was not many. It's not a huge video for my channel, but yeah, that was um, that was a good, uh, interesting topic to think about. I mean, every time I go riding, I think about my daughter and my wife, and like if something were to happen. But you think about that, and I mean, you could be in a car crash, you could have, you could get cancer, there's a million things, you could fall off your roof fixing your house, I mean, there's a million things that could happen. Uh, I'm not gonna, not gonna, you know, be afraid to live my life. Um, should I wait to get a 1300 GS, or is it a long wait still? It could be like a year, I, I really, I wish I knew, because I'm waiting too. Can you do a kit from Napoleon Dynamite impression? I'm, all, I'm always doing a kit from Napoleon Dynamite impression. I am kit from Napoleon Dynamite. Everyone knows that. Uh, oh, Marcus says, compare the Yamaha Tenere 700 with a Prilius 660. So I thought about doing like a video about that. My, my short answer is the Yamaha has a lot of dealers. It's gonna be more reliable probably. And it's less money if you can find one at MSRP. The Aprilia is higher performance. The Touareg, I think, will run away from the Yamaha on road and off road. Better suspension, better engine, better brakes, better chassis. Doesn't feel as top heavy, has more fuel range. I like everything about the Aprilia better, except there's not many dealers. So I don't know. Let's see. Oh, thank you, Chip, for the donation. I appreciate that very much. I'm trying to see who the donations are so I can answer those questions. My best mornings on a longer commute. Greg says this. He says, a hot cup of coffee and listening to your latest video. Oh, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. It's funny because when I ride or when I do long drives to LA to pick up bikes, I like to listen to motorcycle podcasts or I'll put on a YouTube video in the background to listen to the audio. So I totally get that. And I wish I had time to do a podcast, but I just, you know... I need to have a personal life too outside of outside of this job, but I'd love to do a podcast if I could. I wish there was a KTM 450 with increased ground clearance. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's see here. Going through the rest of the comments. Um, should I get a V-Strom 650 or a Yamaha FZ6? I would get the V-Strom. I've ridden both of those. The FZ6, the engine, you have to rev it to like 8,000 RPM to get any power out of it. I would, I'd probably get the V-Strom. It's more versatile and I like that. I like the, the uh, V-Twin engine better. Uh, Moto Camp Nerd, I'm guilty of offering gear for honest reviews. Yes, I know you're, I, it was so great to meet you. 
Um, really nice guy. If you haven't checked out Moto Camp Nerd, go to his website. I mean, amazing camping gear curated for motorcycling. Really great stuff. And uh, I bought, uh, what did I buy? Like a sleeping pad when I was at Overland Expo. So it was great to meet you. Um, I need to get that tent too. Let's see, between pizzas, between Ian and Dork in the Road made me excited to step into the adventure world. Well, thank you for saying that. That, that means a lot. I, that, that's good. Um, scrolling through. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dork in the Road, for the donation. That's, that's very much appreciated. Trevor says, you're one of the big reasons I've started getting into adventure motorcycles. On your recommendation, I bought a 22 KLR. That's awesome. That's such an underrated bike. Um, I mean, for what, six sixty five hundred bucks, you get a bike you could ride around the world. It's comfortable. It's pretty capable. It's reliable for the most part. Um, you know, the Duicky is something that's not going to happen in, in 10 or 20,000 miles. That's like a long-term thing. So KLR is great. That's how I got started in adventure riding was KLRs. Let's see... Seems like there's some people chatting back and forth, but I can't uh, I can't figure out how that works in the chat. Chip says, how many miles a year do you put on motorcycles? You know, I don't know anymore because it's hard to track with the press bikes. Like I just put a thousand miles on a BMW press bike, but it's not my own bike, so I don't really see the odometer. I'm guilty of not looking at the odometer of any bikes anymore. I just kind of tend to ride them. I mean, my own bikes, I, I do the maintenance, so I have to check the odometers, but... Um, I don't know. I probably ride more miles on bikes than I put on cars, that's for sure. Just because I have to test everything, make the videos. I try to ride the bikes as much as I can before I do the videos, so I kind of have some some of the evaluation already done, but sometimes it's just, you know, I don't have enough time. Thank you, Mike, for your donation of $10. I really appreciate that. Uh, Adventure Tomek, $5. Thank you so much for the donation. Uh, let's see. Once we figure out how to manipulate space and time, <laughs> you can join in with me and Dork and do a podcast. I would love to do that. I, I think a podcast would be good with like a few people instead of just, I don't want to sit here by myself and do a podcast. So it would be really good to, to think about that. Uh, open bar. Uh, Joe Blow says it was an open bar. Well, I have my drink. It's not alcoholic because I don't drink, but I have a Coke Zero, so... I encourage everybody to uh, pop open their favorite drink. Uh, let's see, the KLR is the best value in adventure. I agree, it, it really is. What's You know, some other bikes I think are really good value. The Honda CB500X, I would put uh, on that list too. Um, Show us the bike. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll go out. We'll go out in a minute. Um, we're gonna go out and see the new bike to replace the Norden. So we'll see how the live stream works on the on the run here. Oh, thank you, Pete, for the donation. I appreciate that. I didn't know if this super chat thing would actually work because I tried testing it and it wasn't like working, but it seems to be working. Um... <laughs> Dork in the road, yeah. I think Dork in the road can definitely can definitely outdrink me very easily. Um, but I love those videos when when you're when you're having a drink and just chatting. Those are really cool videos. Uh, let's see. Have you had a chance to ride the Versa 300X? No, and I really want to, but they don't have Kawasaki doesn't have one in the demo fleet because probably because they don't sell any of them and they don't have a demo bike. And I don't know anybody who owns one, so it's been a very hard bike to get. Uh, DR650 would be great with six speed and fuel injection. Yes. Um, I don't think Suzuki cares, uh, honestly. Um, but I have a feeling they might do something with the DRZ. That's my feeling. I think the DR650 will just go away. I, I, honestly, I know it's sad. I think it'll just go away. Uh, interested to see why you sold the Norden. So I sold the Norden because I wanted something similar to it, but with better suspension. And also I decided to get the Africa Twin and sell the GS. So the plan was I was going to sell the GSA and sell the Norden and get the Africa Twin to replace both. Well, that only worked out for a few weeks until I decided to buy something else as well. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, we'll talk about that in a minute. 
Oh, thank you. Uh, I don't know. I think it's probably Jesse, Flying Monkey Adventure Riders. That's uh, my friend Jesse, who, who's an Instagram guy and uh, awesome guy I've been riding with forever. We've been riding together forever. Flying Monkey Adventure Riders is a local riding club based out of Temecula, and we ride together all the time. Thank you, Jesse. Um, let's see. No politics, please. Not, definitely, that has no place on my channel. Um, let's see. Almost bought a Beastron, but went with a Tiger 900 Rally instead. Yeah, I think that's a good choice. The Beastron is just very old-fashioned, um, but it's a good value. Christopher says, I turned to the dark side, Eurobikes for me, KTM from now on. I, I get you. I get it totally. Like having fun is very important and I'm willing to sacrifice some reliability to have more fun. That's just, it's a motorcycle. I want, I want to feel that passion from it. So I, I agree with you there. And I'm actually, I'm probably going to buy a Ducati Hypermotard or a Ducati Monster. I just haven't decided because I've never had a Ducati. I just want something super sporty for the street that's fun to ride like on Sunday ride to my local cafes and hang out with other bikers and stuff. And I want like a street triple, but I've already had triumphs, but I think a, a Ducati Monster or Hyper Motard would be, would be good. Thank you, Jose, for the donation. I don't know uh, what amount that means, but thank you so much. It's a different currency. Thank you very much. Um, oh, Costa Rica. Wow, that's awesome. I would love to go to Costa Rica. I just don't know when I'll have time. It, it's been hard. You know, I, I started this channel pretty much when we had our baby and during the pandemic. So it's been a very interesting time in terms of travel and uh, being able to really do much of anything. Uh, what are people saying about the Ducati? Let's see. Desert X. Yeah, but the Desert X, I know it's cool, but I have... I, I've owned like so many adventure bikes. I want to do something more sporty. I'll keep the Africa Twin and keep the, uh, the other bike, um, but I want to get something sporty. Hyper Motard, yeah. Thank you, Constellation Pegasus, for your donation. So let me answer your question. Uh, what is better bike for street and highway use, V-Strom 650 or Versus 650? I decided against the KLR. Um, you know, if you're going to do some off-roading, the V-Strom is better than the Versus. The Versus is a 17-inch front wheel, and it, it has that pipe under the engine, and it's a lower to the ground. The suspension travels not as much. The Versus is really just a road bike with adventure styling. The V-Strom is actually designed to do some off-roading. 19-inch front wheel, you can get spoked, so I would go with the V-Strom. Uh, if you're going to do off-road. If you're not going to do off-road, the Versus is more fun to ride on the street. Smaller front wheel is better on the street than a bigger front wheel. Let's see. Uh, thank you guys for all these comments. Kawasaki Z H2 SC. <laughs> you know, that Rebel Connect, that's a great comment. Um, yeah, I would probably die on my first ride, though. Just go straight to the V2 or the Diavel. I, yeah, I don't know. Um, Multistrada. Yeah, maybe a Multistrada. That's true. Uh, thank you for the donation, Constellation. Um, opinions on the W800. I don't know anything about that. I'm sorry to say, I just don't know enough about it. I know it's like a parallel twin. It looks like the Triumph Bonneville. I think that's the one, but I don't know enough about it. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, and everybody, uh, Ben said, if you hit the like button, that'll help. I, I don't know how these live streams get promoted. I know a lot of people will watch this tomorrow, um, but I don't know what a good number would be for live streaming. Do you feel that traditional sport tours, such as the Ninja 1000 SX and GSX 1000 GT, are still worth owning? Yeah, I do, and I just did the video on the GSX 1000 GT+. Plus. It's not out yet. It's not even edited but I just filmed that bike and it's an amazing motorcycle for 13 grand. Like you can't get that level of performance on the street from any adventure bike for 13 grand. There's no way. So I think there's still a place for those bikes. Um, and the Ninja is the direct competitor to the, to the GSXS. So yeah, I think there is for me personally, if I was going to spend the money, I would still probably buy something a little more adventure oriented just because I like the fully upright position instead of the more, 
aggressive position. That's just that's just me. Uh, oh, the, yeah, Bart, uh, so you can see um, in the background kind of here, there's um, my computer. He says RGB. Yeah, that's my gaming computer. I, that's my editing computer. So I, that's where I edit the videos in there. I don't play video games, though. I just don't have the time. I did when I was a kid. I was a big gamer. Thank you guys for all these great chat messages. Uh, let's see. Would you be confident to take a 900 Rally Pro on a around the world trip? I, I think so. Triumph has, has quite a bit of dealers and it seems to be a really well put together bike. And I think um, I think Eric from XLADV, doesn't he ride one of those all over the world? Um, on He does Instagram and he makes, makes articles and stuff. I think he's riding one. Let's see. Any experience with Trailmax missions? Yes, I've used them on the, I've ridden them on the 790R, which my friend Brandon has now. I've ridden them, I've had them on my GSA, and now I have them on the Africa Twin. I love the Tromax Missions, they're probably my favorite tires. The only thing is, deep sand or slippery mud or snow, they're not going to, that's when you need a knobby. But for dirt, gravel, even like a little bit of sand here and there, um, and for street, the Trailmax Mission, there's nothing better than that tire, in my opinion. And they last a long time, too. Let's see here. Oh, a lot of you hit the like button. Thank you for that. These live streams are kind of fun. I didn't expect this many people. Uh, let's see. Just bought the new Tiger 1200 GT Explorer. That's awesome. I think you're going to love that bike. Okay, try to keep up here. Let's see. What do you do for your day job? Uh, well, YouTube has been my day job for about a year. So I decided to do this full time about a year ago. Before that, I was 14 years in a corporate job. So I was a development director at a large nonprofit organization for 14 years. I worked there. It was a great career and um, I just decided to make the transition into something else. So, um, but yeah, uh, this is my day job now. Let's see. What do you think about Fortnite's thesis that the KLR650 is seeing its last sunset? I think he's, I think it's probably right. I think bikes like the KLR, I honestly was shocked that Kawasaki put fuel injection and brought the KLR out again. I thought it was over when they discontinued the last one, the Gen 2. And I'm shocked they brought it back. So I would have said that the 2018 KLR was going to be the end. I think I did say that. The DR650 bikes like that with carburetors, I mean, they've got to either get updated at some point or go away. I think those big capacity single cylinders, yeah, I don't know. Because when you ride a twin cylinder, it's so much better. Like a twin cylinder is so much smoother than a single, right? And so it's hard to sell those big singles. Also, the emissions are harder on the singles. They get heavy. I'm not sure. That could be the last KLR, but but I don't know. Let's see. Uh, the Africa Twin seems to have more power than the spec sheet suggests. Test right and forget the specs. I agree. Um, it's pretty quick. And the thing about the Africa Twin 1100 is it may not feel super fast, but you look down at the speedometer and you're going like 100. Like it's deceptively quick So because it's smooth. Have you reviewed the Tracer 9 GT? No, I have not because Yamaha doesn't work with me yet, but I used to own the FJ09, which was the precursor to it. I do have an old video on that. It's a bad video, so it's kind of crappy quality, but I do have that. That's a great bike, but I would probably get, if I was in that category, I'm not sure that I would choose that. I don't know. Let's see. Thank you guys for keeping the comments coming. Let's see here. What is a good 50-50 tire for dual sports? Richard, a uh, good 50-50 tire for dual sports that is still the same. Um, I'm not sure, I, I'm not sure what, what you're asking there, sorry. Um, good dual sport tires, like a Dunlop 606 has always been a great dual sport tire. Tusk has their D-Sports, which I'm not a huge fan of, honestly. 
Um, so there's a lot of good tires out there. Shinko makes some really good dual sport tires that are pretty affordable. Let's see. Oh, boy, I'm really behind. Try to scroll through these comments here. So I'm not going to be able to get to all of these, so I apologize. Norden versus Africa Twin. We'll talk about that in the video. Uh, let's see. Norden has a reliability of a Fiat. Um, yeah, I had some issues with my Norden, but I think they were overblown, and I didn't mean to do that. It was mostly just the shock failure, which they fixed. Other than that, there was just a few small things, and uh, I think Ben's is doing fine. Ben has one, Dorkin Road. Best 50-50 tires for the road. Um, Trailmax Mission. If you don't need a fallen knobby, the Trailmax Mission. Other than that, yeah, the AX41 is the best. The AX41 is my favorite tire, but it just doesn't last very long. Tiger 900 or 1200? I would go 900. You just you just don't need a 1200. Like It's just overkill. Unless you have to have shaft drive, then the 1200 is better. Are there any Harley Davidson reviews in your future from Flying Monkey? Uh, yes. So I talked about this earlier. You may not have been on, but uh, I just got... Harley just officially opened their test fleet to me, so I'm actually picking up the Pan America on Thursday and doing, doing that for a month, I have it for a month to review that bike. So yes, I'm gonna be going through pretty much all of Harley's lineup, but I'll be starting with the Pan America. So that's really exciting because it's crazy to have a motorcycle channel and not cover Harley Davidson. Where is Ryan F9? Well, he's, he's not gonna be here, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> he doesn't care about this. Um, I love Ryan's videos though, I love Fortnite, but it's a whole different kind of channel than mine. Do you know when Honda may be releasing the new smaller Africa Twin? No, and I wouldn't get my hopes up for that. I, I don't know, because all we've ever seen on that is like fake news. I don't know that we're going to get a smaller Africa Twin. They, they feel that the CB500X is the small Africa Twin, right? So I don't know. I'm not sure we're ever going to get it. It'd be amazing. What's your opinion on Motos GPS? I've heard great things about the GPS tires. Uh, but I just really like the Tremax missions, so I, I'm not sure. The GPS would be would be a really good choice though for a long mileage uh, tire, you know, if you don't want to do deep mud or, or deep sand or anything. Thank you, Frank, for the donation of $10. He says, um, I'm a new rider with a 2015 KLR. Should I upgrade the suspension or save my money, ride and get something nicer like an 890 Adventure? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of doing huge, big upgrades to a bike because you're probably eventually you're going to be tempted by the nicer bike anyway, and then the money you spent on the suspension and all the stuff for the KLR, you're not going to get that back. So I'm more a fan of just saving up and buying the nicer bike. If you already know you want an 890 Adventure, which is an amazing motorcycle, probably one of the best motorcycles ever made, like in terms of performance, then just save up for that if that's what you know you want. I wouldn't spend a ton of money on the KLR. Just appreciate the KLR for what it is, ride within its limits, and then you know buy what you want when you can afford it. That's, that's my opinion. Okay, a lot more comments here. Did you sell the Norden? Yes, I did. Um, <laughs> Swabby Gun says, no blasphemy on the KLR going away. I know, it'd be sad if, if the KLR went away. It'd be very, very sad. Life's Journey at 50. I remember meeting you at, uh, at an event. I think, it, I forget what event it was, but I know we've met. So thank you for coming on the chat. Um, could you adventure on a Tracer 9 GT? You could, but it's not going to be, it's going to be fragile. You're going to get flat tires and, you know, if you drop it, you're going to break the fairing. I mean, it's not the best. You can have an adventure if you want, it's just not the best tool for the job. Uh, let's see. Tiger, we've kind of talked about the Tiger and the Africa Twin already. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, some, some Modas GPS are slippery in the rain. Yeah, you know, the Trailmax mission is to the back tire, the Trailmax mission in the rain or the, the cold weather is pretty slippery on pavement. So the traction control, you kind of need the traction control for sure. Um, 1800 GS? No, they're, they're going to go to a 1300 GS, I think. They're going to just bump it a little bit. American dude, uh, let's see, getting my teams in the riding. Should I get a 250 dual sport or get them like a 390 adventure? I would I would say probably a 250 dual sport and get one with the lowest seat height you can if they're newer riders like the XT250 or something like that. Buy a used one that's already beat up. The 390 adventure is more for like riding on the road most of the time. Okay, we're gonna go, yeah. We're gonna go outside to see the new bike. Okay, um, why don't we, why don't I just scroll to the bottom here? Okay, we've got about 300 people watching. So why don't we, why don't we go outside to the driveway before it gets dark? Let me grab my phone and we'll go outside. Okay, I hope this is gonna work. I gotta walk through the house here and we'll go out to the driveway and uh, show you what I bought to replace the Norden. So I've actually had it for for a while. I just haven't made any posts about it because I've just been working on the bike and I've just been very busy. So here we go. I'm gonna reveal the new bike. And a lot of you are going to, I'm going to get a lot of hate mail about this choice. You guys are going to be like, what in the hell? Um, here she is. So you guys can see it now. It's are coming through in the comments. I don't know. It's hard for me to see the comments now that I'm on the phone, but, um, so I bought an 890 adventure rally. So why would I, why would I buy this? By the way, I hope the audio is still okay. Um, yeah, so this for me, so everything I liked about the Norden, the I get that with the 890, but the suspension on the Rally is completely unbelievable. It's the uh, WP Pro uh, Explore Pro suspension. So it's the cone valves. The suspension is so far beyond any other adventure bike in the world. It's insane. Like you can, you could literally race this bike in a Dakar rally. Like not that I'm good enough to do that, but it's that good. Um, and the rally was a limited edition. They only brought 200 of these to the U S uh, for one year. They don't sell anymore. So I kind of wanted to get one while I could. And uh, it's, it's an incredible motorcycle. Everything I liked about the Norden and I've also had a 790 R, but the rally takes it to the next level with the suspension. Um, but you can see, I still do have my nice reliable Africa twin if the KTM breaks down, which it probably will because it's a KTM, but I still love it. Like this, this is so much more fun to ride than that. Like there's no competition. Like that's a great bike, but it's not that exciting to ride. This thing though is insane to ride. It's so much fun and it's so capable and it's kind of my dream bike, right? So yeah, the cone valve suspension is really awesome. I'm gonna have videos on it. So I, what I was gonna do, I wanted to upgrade the Norden. I wanted to put the suspension on Norden, right? Um, but I looked into the cost. So to buy this suspension and put it on the Norden was gonna cost $7,000 US. And that just, that was insane. So I made a decision to just sell the Norden and just buy the Rally. So I bought this used because again, they don't, I mean, they only made 200 and you can't buy a new one anymore. So I had to pay a pretty steep price for it, but it only had 900 miles on it when I bought it. So, you know, I'm still setting it up and doing some things to it. You can see I've got a parent moto rack. It comes with this uh, rally seat, which I think is nice. I've got the wide rally pegs. I put an AXP skid plate on it, uh, which is I think a great skid plate. I've got some Tusk luggage on for now, but I also have Lone Riders and I also have Moscos. So I have different luggage that I'll change. I have uh, flex bars. I've got a Scott steering stabilizer. So I went all, I'm going all out, all out on this bike, like no expense spared just because it's a rally. Like you have to, I've got my GPS up here on the motor pumps mount, the uh, windshield. And actually, you know what the wind, the wind buffeting on this is way, um, way less than the Norden. So it's a much smoother wind flow, much quieter than the Norden was, especially with, with that spoiler on it. So 
very happy with that and i like the white and the blue and the orange i think it looks really cool it's kind of flashy but it looks pretty cool and there's the africa twin in its current state so some people were saying that these crash bars were ugly but maybe i mean but they're super protective like you're never going to break your radiator or your fairing with those things on and skid plate everything works really well outback motor tech Help me out with this stuff. So they're, they're a really good company. Moscow luggage is amazing. Uh, let's see. And uh, yeah, but I really like, you know, for the money, these Tuss Olympus bags are awesome. These work great. And they're like half the price of those Moscow backcountries. So I like to test everything um, and see, you know, I don't really have loyalties to different things. But I mean, if I had to choose one set of luggage, it'd probably be the Moscow's. I think they're probably the best. So yeah, there's the 890. Let me come around to the other side. Yeah, so it's it's a very cool bike, and I have already filmed some content with it. I just haven't posted it up yet, so that'll be coming. And then you can see the Africa Twin here. The Africa Twin's a great machine too. So I've got the Nelson rig tail bag, I've got the Moscow Pico tank bag on here, tire pressure monitors, my GPS mounts here on the Africa Twin. You can see the switch gear with 20 million buttons. The Android Auto though is amazing on this thing. The the way that you can put your phone up on the screen here and control everything through the switch gear while you're riding is, is amazing. That's a great feature to have. And of course, I just like the gold rims. You can see I've got the highway pegs. I finally got the highway pegs on. So yeah, so you can see I've got the uh, Mission Trailmax Missions on there. Uh, this bike still has the factory TKC80s. I actually really love the TKC80s. Probably one of my favorite tires for performance. But the problem is, the rear tire only lasts about eh, 1,500 miles or so, maybe 2,000 miles before it's just gone on a bike like this. So, Desert Dave says start the KTM. Okay, yeah, that's true. So this has the, uh, it has a wings. So I've got a wings titanium exhaust with the baffle out. It really sounds good when you're riding it because it has a lot of induction noise. Under the seat here, I have the uh, Rottweiler um, pre-filter. So let me show you real quick. Sorry, I know that's a little crazy. Um, so I've got the power plate here, which pre-filters the air going into the stock air box and it makes some more noise so it's it's a really nice sound and of course it's got the uh, wings exhaust which sounds great so anyway the the rally's amazing also some people don't know but there's you can fit tools under these side panels they have toolboxes in these side panels which is kind of cool someone said start the africa twin okay Jim Lewis says, until it breaks. Yeah, I know. That's why I have a Honda as well, <laughs> in case the KTM breaks. So you can see the dashboard. One of the things that still bugs me on this, it takes forever for the TFT to boot up. Um, but that's because it has a lot of software in it. Um, but I just, what I do is that when I'm getting ready to ride, I just hit it, I just turn it on and then put my helmet and gloves on. By the time I have my helmet on, it's ready to go. The Honda actually sounds really good. Uh, even when you're riding it, it sounds great too. I put the stock pipe back on. I actually had a Yoshimura and I didn't like it. Um, so I don't know. It's uh, I like the stock exhaust sound better. It's just a bit quieter, a bit more refined. It was too loud with the Yoshi on it. So why don't we go into the um, garage and see what bikes I have for testing and then we'll go back inside. So... So I just finished uh, filming uh, this bike. This is a Suzuki GSX S1000 GT. So it's a sport touring bike with hard bags, cruise control. It's got the engine from the old GSX R1000. So this is an amazing bike, really nice. 
I've got the BMW, and the, so these are press bikes. I don't own these bikes, just by the way. Um, this is the K1600 Grand America, so that's the six cylinder uh, with the hard bags and all the technology. Actually, this bike, I have a really love-hate relationship with this bike, and I have to get into that in the videos. Um, so that's that. That's going to be a tough review because there's some things I like, some things I don't like. The engine is incredible, though. I mean, just incredible. Inline six-cylinder engine. The only motorcycle with an inline six. Uh, so and then I've got the Honda Honda Honda. Gosh, I can't even talk anymore. Honda CRF 300L Rally. I haven't uh, filmed this yet. Um, Honda gave this to me for like two or three months. They said take your time, so I haven't even filmed it yet. This is the bike Itchy Boots is riding right now. The exact same bike. And so I'm really looking forward to doing that bike. And then I finished, I did finish filming the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. Um, pretty amazing, pretty great, not perfect. It doesn't have the slow speed stability or the good slow speed control that a GS does. The engine likes to rev up. It's not, it stalls out a lot off road. It, I don't know, it's not totally refined like a GS, but it, the engine is more peaky. It's a little more exciting to ride. And there's some things I really like about it. So the, the Tiger 1200 is a pretty cool machine. Um, and then I also do bicycles, but we won't get into that now. So I have a Turbo Levo, the new Turbo Levo Gen 3, uh, which is a great electric mountain bike. And then I have a Trek uh, Damani SL6, I think, electronic drivetrain. So I don't even have time to make videos about the bicycles anymore. So yeah, so that's the, that's the garage right now. So I'm going to... I'm going to start heading back to my computer because I can't really see the chats um, very well when I'm doing it on the phone. So, wave goodbye to the rally and the Africa Twin. We're going to head back in. So let's head back in the house. I'll take a lap around the deck because it's kind of pretty right now. So I live in the mountains of Southern California. I don't live in Colorado like some people say. I live in Southern California. We do have mountains here. Uh, but I live really high up at about 6,000 feet. So this is the view from the deck. Um, so yeah, we're 6,000 feet up. So the ocean is about 40 miles out that way. And then this is the town of Idlewild here. And then these mountains are between 8,000 and to 10,000 feet up, up on these ridges here. So yeah, it's a cool place to live. Uh, a lot of downsides to it uh, as well, though, <laughs> which we don't have time to get into. But, but uh, yeah, we, we get snow and ice in the winter. So even though it's California, it's not palm trees and sunshine all the time. Like we get a lot of snow and ice up here at this altitude. Um, so it, it has its ups and downs. So let, let me head back into the uh, studio there so I can get back to answering some of these chat questions. I've seen a lot of questions come through while I was out here playing with the bikes. Oh, let me, uh, you gotta meet Matt, you gotta meet uh, Mrs. Big Rock. You gotta meet Mrs. Big Rock. This is Mrs. Big Rock, this is Maggie. Hi everyone. Yeah, Maggie's the best, the best wife ever. Best person ever. And uh, where's Sierra? She's sleeping finally. Oh, she's sleeping. The, the baby, so we have a two year old uh, girl, so she's, she's sleeping, which is a, a rare miracle, so. Okay, let's, uh, let me put this back. Okay, that was fun. Is the audio and video still looking okay? It doesn't look good from my, from my end, but I can't really tell. I'm never gonna get. I'm never gonna catch up on all these comments. Uh, let's see. So if you have, if you have something a really important question you want to ask, you can use the uh, super chat, or you can just post it again um, now. So I'll. So if you posted something that you really want me to answer, go ahead and put it in again, because I can't. I don't have time to scroll back through all these hundreds of comments. Um, I'll try to try to get some of the big questions here. So what do, you, what do you guys think about the choice for the 890 Rally? Do you think I'm out of my mind after the problems I had with the Norden? Yeah. 
trying to get through the chat questions here. CRF 300 is a letdown. Suspension gets you in trouble. Yeah, the suspension on the Honda 300L is the softest of any bike I've ever ridden. It's it's crazy. You, it's unrideable off-road for me anyway. Um, it's a cool bike though. Uh, need a roommate? <laughs> no, I've got a two-year-old. A two-year-old girl as a roommate. She's, she's plenty. Um, uh, fire zone. Yes, we have we have a real issue with uh, wildfire, forest fires up here. In fact, this town I live in, in the past 30 years, has come very close to burning down three different in three different fires. So it's it's a real problem. And I don't even want to tell you what our home insurance costs, but it's it's insane for to get fire insurance. It's so expensive. But we're an hour from, we're like an hour and a half from the beach and I can, and I'm an hour from Palm Springs in the desert. So we have really good geography here. Let's see. You have a very patient wife. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm actually home a lot though, because of all the editing and all the, the work that it takes to run this business you know, from the office, I'm actually home quite a bit, um, which is great because we don't really have rely any sort of childcare up here. Uh, let's see. Are you doing a review of the 300 rally? Yes, I'm doing a review, a whole dedicated review on the 300 rally. So that'll be coming soon. Uh, most adventure bikes are too tall for me. I agree. They're just too tall for most people. Uh, were you there when the huge fire was coming up and there was a miracle the town did not burn down? Yes, yes, I was. And it was one of the worst, uh, scariest things in my life, to be honest. Um, outdoors with me, the 890 is cool as long as you have the Honda as well as a backup. Yeah, that's true. When will the 2022 CB500X review? That'll be a week from today. So a week from today. I do have a video on accessories on the GS1250, so you can, that's on my channel. Uh, let's see. The Pan America's active, active suspension is a game changer. Yeah, the adaptive ride height is amazing. It's a great feature on the Pan America. Um, Scrambler 1200 review. Yeah, I do work with Triumph, and I have asked for a... Scrambler 1200 XC or XC to review. So hopefully that'll be coming soon. The press fleets, just so everyone knows, like the press fleets are an interesting thing. Some companies have smaller fleets and they might only have like a couple bikes for the whole country. So like if I want to review whatever it is, the Tiger 1200, they might only have a few bikes for the whole like Western half of the US. And so a channel like mine is not going to be like at the top of the list compared to Revzilla and Cycle World. So I kind of have to wait my turn a little bit. And that's just why it takes me longer to catch up. Uh, how many motorcycles have you owned? Um, I kind of lost track, but I think I've had about 35 different bikes that I've, that I've owned. And then of course, now I'm lucky I get to ride, ride all sorts of bikes because uh, of, of this job. Do you still have the T7? No. It's one of my favorite bikes of all time though, the Tenere 700, but no, I, I don't have it anymore. It's a bike that I would buy again because that's how much I like it. <laughs> ben says, I'm gonna show my wife saying you've had 35 bikes. Yes, you know, here's my take on that. I mean, life is short. Like I've had a lot of health issues. I've had some serious health issues. And there may come a time when I can't ride um, and I don't know when that time may come. So I'm just very, um, I'm a very, I very much believe in, in doing things you're passionate about uh, and creating a life for yourself that allows you to afford it, you know? So I, I don't know. I think it's okay to have hobbies. Let's see. Manufacturers that build adventure bikes would be nuts not to have you on their radar for reviews. I think it's getting better. Uh, more manufacturers are, are recognizing the importance of YouTube and also independent uh, journalist stuff like I do. And so I've, you know, it's, it's getting better. I think there's a few companies like Ducati that never writes me back. I think they're just too fancy or something. I, I don't know. 
Uh, what did you do before YouTube? So I covered that earlier, but yeah, I was a development director uh, for a nonprofit, a big nonprofit organization for about 15 years. So I did, had a resource development career in nonprofit, which was a great career. Um, what drove you to start the Big Rock Moto channel? It was by accident. I never meant to do it. So if you've been around a long time, for this channel, I had different channel names, and I think it was just my own name at first. I didn't have Big Rock Moto at all. But I posted like an Africa Twin video with my cell phone, where I didn't even appear in the video. It was like a review of the Africa Twin. Just posted it up, and then I didn't check YouTube for like six months or something. I didn't know that the video had all these views and subscribers. So I come back, and I'm like, what is going on? And I don't know how many subscribers I had or whatever with that one video, I don't remember. But I posted a few more reviews of bikes that I had and I only took a few videos and I had like a thousand subscribers. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'll post a few more. And then it just went from there. Um, you should organize a big rock ride someday. Yeah, I've thought, I've thought about that. Shinko 700, that's a good tire. Shinko 700 and a 705, those are great tires. Uh, Root says, love your content. Fortnite, Moto Jitsu. Yeah, Moto Jitsu, I met him at an event. He's a great guy, really good videos. Uh, Fortnite is good as well. So no Desert X. I don't know. I might get a Desert X. I, I just, I'm not sure. It's expensive to buy. Bu so buying a bike to review and then sell it in six months is expensive. Taxes, insurance, depreciation, uh, you know, all the things that you go through, like, even for a channel like mine, that's an expensive thing to buy a bike for review uh, because you're always going to lose money when you sell it. So I have to really be careful with what bikes I buy. You need to write Ducati while wearing designer leathers. <laughs> designer leathers, yeah, that's true. Um, like sipping coffee, sipping espresso or something, right? <coughs> These, these comments are really hard to scroll through. Um, okay, yeah, Joey says, KTM 500, six days. Um, yeah, I had that bike for, I don't know, six months or so, and I don't remember why I ended up selling it, um, but I ended up getting the beta later on. The, that, that 500, six days was definitely the nicest dual sort bike I ever had, but it was a lot of money to have invested in a bike that I hardly ever rode. I just don't ride the small dual sports very much, because I usually have to ride like 50 miles or 100 miles on the highway to go to get where I'm going. And I just like the bigger bikes and how they handle. But so I've had a lot of dual sports and I just never have the time to really ride them very much, maybe a couple times a year. So that's why I usually end up selling them, but I do like them. Let's see, Robert says, me and my buddy bought an 890 and a T7 the same day. Yeah, so I did a video comparing like the 790R and the 890R to the T7, like a buyer's guide. A lot of people watch that. And so I kind of covered everything in that video. I mean, an eight, no offense to T7 owners, but an 890R will run circles around a T7 on and off road. Like it's, no, it's not even a competition, like in terms of performance, I'm not talking about reliability or any of that stuff, but in terms of performance, you can't you can't touch the 890 it's just at another it's at another level especially the r or the rally does it make you nervous making videos and putting your face out there on youtube uh it did for a long time but i'm finally just getting used to it because it's just my job it's just a job now so i'm just used to it it did it, it did make me nervous at first Let's see, I bought a 21 Suzuki V-Strong because of a review. Thank you, oh, that's awesome, I'm glad. I hope I hope you like the bike. I put it, a Sheriff says I put a deposit on the Desert X. Yeah, I, I feel you, that Desert X it looks amazing and it's probably gonna be a ton of fun to ride. Yeah, Dork, Dork in the Road says, yeah, I own the Northern and the T7 and I agree. Yeah, it's, it's true and the Northern is very similar. It has the same engine as the 890. The, the suspension is softer on the Norden, which was an issue for me because I like to ride faster, like off-road. Um, but the Norden, God, the Norden looks amazing. And I like the dashboard better on the Norden than the KTM. 
The windshield is better on the KTM. The Norden has terrible wind buffeting for me. So I, I don't know. There's a lot of ups and downs. Um, but yeah, instead of upgrading the suspension on the Norden, I just sold it and got the 890 Rally. Let's see. Uh, on bike meetings, how do you go as a non-drinker with your quiet personality? I feel the most drinking and partying all night. So yeah, I don't really fit in as a biker, so I don't go to a lot of those kinds of things. Or if I do, I just kind of go to bed early and go to sleep. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't fit in, but that's okay. It's okay not to fit in. Um, let's see. <laughs> Swabby Gun says, I'm poor because of dork in the road causing me to drink higher end bourbon. <laughs> yeah, I spend all my money on motorcycles, as you can see, so I don't have any money for alcohol. So, um, let's see. Dork says you fit in just fine. Yeah, I still manage to, it's okay. Like, I don't care about fitting in. I don't care if I'm different. Like, I'm okay with that. I always have been. Um, it can be hard sometimes though, but it, it's okay. Like. I, I, and, I, and I don't think like, you know, well, anyway, I don't want to talk about biker culture because I think that's a whole nother conversation. Trying to see if I missed any super chat. So you can also do the super chat um, and make a donation that way if you want me to answer your question. I'm probably going to end at like 730 because um, I'm starting to see the viewers drop off a little bit. We're not bikers, we're motorcyclists. Yeah, that's true. Like the whole biker image that kind of came out of America like in the 70s or whatever with some of those movies, like that's not representing motorcycling around the world at all. But unfortunately, a lot of people have that in their head. They have that, or where I live, they have the sport bike. We call them squids, it's probably derogatory. I shouldn't say that word, but like squids is meant to mean like a sport biker who's like wearing like a t-shirt and like tennis shoes and riding like a Gixxer 1000 like way too fast. And they're the ones, unfortunately, that usually end up having fatal accidents up here where I live. Um, so yeah, those, those people don't give us a good, a good image. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Bike life. <laughs> How do you keep objectivity while staying with the manufacturers? It's, is it hard? Yeah, it is hard because I have to... I try to be as fair as I can. I just have to be very, when I have negative things to say about a product or a motorcycle, I try to be very diplomatic and tactful about it, but I still am gonna say it. And if they have a problem with me being negative or, say, or saying something I don't like, then I don't wanna work with them. You know what I mean? Like if they literally can't take constructive criticism, uh, then I shouldn't be working with them. And for the most part, they're fine with that kind of stuff. You're not gonna go crazy and say like, oh, you know, this tiger is the biggest piece of crap ever, yeah. They're going to cut you off if you do that, but you just have to be reasonable. Um, squid isn't derogatory, it's justified. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are squids in every state, yeah, probably. Uh, did you sell your Jeep? Yes, I, I got a Ram Rebel with the Eco Diesel. Uh, so I get 25 miles a gallon, I have tons more power and torque. It's, it's comfortable, it's luxurious, it tows my trailers better, I have more room, it's better for the family. I give up a little bit of off-road ability, but yeah, I did sell the Gladiator, the Jeep Gladiator, and, and I do miss it, but the Ram is a better truck for where I am in life right now. So I want another Jeep, but I want like a, a Wrangler. I don't want, the Gladiator's too big for being on the trail. Uh, let's see, Marcus, thank you for your donation, Marcus. I appreciate it. I'd like to see you do more BDR camping trips. I would like to do that. There's a couple things with that. They're hard to film if you like making those travel videos on the bike, they're hard to film. They take a lot of time. It interferes with my enjoyment of the ride because I'm having to film and deal with all that. So it's, and, and so it's a, it's a difficult thing. Do I want to make films about my rides or not? I don't know. Like, and I don't get a ton of views or make a lot of money from those videos. And since I'm running a business, I have to be careful with that. Like if I'm spending time on something that doesn't make money, then then why wouldn't I just use that time to have fun and not make a video, you know? So I don't know, it's tough. Uh, Colorado BDR in August, you know, yeah, maybe. Um, I'd like to do Colorado and Wyoming. 
and Idaho. Those are the those are the three ones I want to do the most. I've ridden most of the Colorado one already, though I feel like, but I'd like to do Idaho for sure. Um, thank you for your donation, uh, rank one and Bert. Thank you for your donation, Bert. Uh, what seat do you have in your Africa Twin? Says Bert. Uh, it's a stock seat, but I have the cool cover. So there's two companies in Europe, in uh, I think in England, that sell cool covers, and I forget the name of the other company. But they make these mesh seat covers that provide airflow, so it makes the seat more comfortable and you don't sweat as much. Uh, so you just put it on over the seat, but it's a stock seat. The stock seat on the Africa Twin is not good. It's too hard, it's very uncomfortable, and I don't like it. But the cover helps a little bit. Um, thank you, Mark, for your donation. Let's see. Do you miss the GSA? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. I missed it from, like, the moment I sold it, I started missing it. Um, it the GS is an amazing motorcycle. M maybe one of the best motorcycles in the world. And I'll get another one. But I like, I like the Africa Twin, too. It's just different. Let's see... see other comments coming through here now yeah if you really want me to answer your question do the super chat thing just shoot a couple bucks through and then it, hi it makes it easier for me to see the question too uh let's see and i appreciate everybody's donations see i have no problem asking for donations i did that for my career for like 14 years i i did fundraising for nonprofit organizations that was my career um let's see is there any shame in trailering a sub 300 pound 250 to 350 dirt machine to the trailhead and skipping the adventure no i would say that's a really good question do whatever you enjoy so if you enjoy riding to the trail on an adventure bike then do that but if you don't enjoy riding on the highway then don't ride on the highway like it doesn't matter what other people are doing or what people tell you to do do what you enjoy it's your free time you paid a lot of money and worked hard to get your toys so if you're not enjoying it, don't do it. So yeah, if you want to trail your bike, then trail your bike and don't care what some random people say about it. Um, do whatever you think is the best for you. I think that's a good question. Um, for me, like I said, I kind of prefer the adventure bikes. I don't know why. I just, I don't, when I ride the dual sport bikes, I just, I don't know. I just don't enjoy it as much. Unless I'm on single track, I guess. Aeroflow, yes, that, thank you, Blue Frog. That was the, maybe that's the name of the other one. Um, Kyle says, are gas prices pushing folks, new folks into the biking world? That's a question that I've been thinking about. I don't think so because it's expensive to buy a motorcycle, right? You've got to buy a bike, you've got to insure it, you've got to register it, you've got to have room in your garage, you have another vehicle now, and how long does it take to get back the gas savings Plus, if you have like a Prius or a Civic or a plug-in hybrid, you're already getting 40 or 50 miles a gallon. Some of these motorcycles don't even get 50 miles a gallon. Like my Africa Twin struggles to get 40 on the highway. I mean, there's cars that get better than that. So I, I don't know, maybe scooters, but also younger people don't ride bikes as much. Like younger people aren't buying motorcycles as much. Electric bicycles and electric scooters, that's what people want because no registration, no insurance, no special license, you can park it anywhere. So electric bicycles and scooters, yeah, people, those are crazy. But motorcycles, I, think, I don't think so. Uh, is there a bike you, that you wish you'd kept? Um, pretty much everything, but I just don't have the money or the space to own you know, 10 or 20 motorcycles or the time to ride all of them. That's another thing is that because I usually have three or four press bikes at a time, if I own three bikes, then that's a total of seven bikes and I'm only one person. I don't have time to ride, put miles on all those bikes. So it doesn't make sense for me to own a lot of stuff, but I do, I pretty much miss every bike that I've had. Except the KLR. No, I'm just kidding. I miss the KLR too. <laughs> right, let's see. Do you mountain bike? Yes, I mountain bike all the time, actually. Um, love mountain biking. Thank you, uh, DBL Vision, Double Vision, $5. Thank you for your donation. Do you feel like KLX 300 is enough bike to do a full BDR out plus gear? 
and three to 500 miles on the highway back home. I, yes, you're gonna have to carry extra fuel. Uh, on the highway, you're gonna be limited to probably about 65 miles per hour or around 100 kilometers per hour. So you're gonna have some things you can work around, but yeah, you could totally do it. Um, and when you're on the BDR, you'll be in a way better position than the people riding adventure bikes because adventure bikes are super heavy on a BDR. A dual sport's better if you can put up with it on the highway. On an M NM BME says, uh, on an adventure, you can just keep going instead of trailering and it's more point to point camping. Yeah, that's the difference in the riding. And I tend to prefer keeping going one direction and camping along the way instead of having to ride back to the truck on a dual sport bike. So yeah, I guess that's why I like adventure bikes. Uh, the Gargantuan says, gas prices are definitely pushing people to buy bikes in Wisconsin. Oh, good, that's good. I think motorcycling has actually been declining a little bit based on some things I've read. So, you know, maybe the gas prices will be one good thing is that they'll get more people to buy bikes. Younger people aren't buying cars either. That's true. That's true. But if you live in, unless you live in an urban area, you, I don't know how you get by without a car, right? Like where I live, it's like the nearest Costco for me is 50 miles one way. So 100 miles of driving for me to go to Costco or Trader Joe's or Walmart. So like I have to have a car, right? I mean, there's no, there's no alternative. Um, the generation gap on motorcycles is distressing. I agree with you. And I really am worried about that. Like most people who are doing this are like in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and also tend to be male. So I think the, the we could talk about the diversity stuff a whole nother time. I don't wanna go down that road, but yeah, I think like having more young people or having more women would be such an amazing thing for motorcycling. Uh, I don't know how we get there, but I, I think that's what we need. Let's see. Rich Dixon, thank you for your donation. Uh, thanks for all you do. It's helping me replace my 2011 GS. Good, thank you. I'm glad. Uh, Brian says, gas savings are, are what guys are telling their wives is the reason they want a bike. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, honey, I heard we can save so much money on gas if I buy this uh, Ninja or this or this uh, KTM. Yeah, I, I would go with it. I mean, go with it while you can. Get the toy while you can, right? Will you ever review a sport bike like the S1000RR? Um, yes, I will. And BMW has offered me the S1000RR. I just haven't taken it because I'm, I'm like afraid of what I'm going to do on that bike. But I am going to do the S1000XR to get myself ready for the S1000RR. But yes, I will. I did the Hayabusa, so that kind of counted. <coughs> <laughs> Hey, John, Jonathan Rosen is here, a good friend of mine, um, really super great guy, supporter of the channel. He says, KLR, KLR, KLR. Yeah, I know, I know. And you're probably still riding your XR 650R too. Um, Desert Dave, what bike did you like the least? Oh gosh. I don't, I couldn't, I don't even know. And I don't want to say anything because people get mad at me right now, but I, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't. I can't pick a bike that I that I don't like. It's it's too hard. Let's see. We have so many international viewers. Uh, I always have to remind myself that this is an international channel, so I try to give the units in different in uh, metric as well as uh, the U.S. units, and I try to remember that because I tend to think like, oh, it's the USA, but no, like. People are watching from all over the world. So thank you all for, for watching from all over the world. I really appreciate that. It's amazing. Um, <coughs> Seth says he demoed a zero and was very surprised. Yeah, I, I really, I've been thinking about buying a zero uh, to do a long-term video series with it on electric bikes. And I kind of put that question out there a while back on social media. It's a very divisive topic, the electric bike thing. So that's good for me as a creator to have a topic that's argumentative and people are passionate on both sides. That's a good thing for me. Um, and I'd like to explore the idea, but one of the challenges where I live is that uh, every ride I do is pretty long. Like for me to ride to my favorite like mountain roads and back or my favorite like pie shop and back, 
is like at least 100 miles round trip, and some of those electric bikes can't even make it. So it's, it's kind of an interesting dilemma. Okay, trying to get through the other questions here. Thank you guys for all of these good questions. Let's see. <laughs> you need to translate into five languages at the same time and keep up with the chat. I know, right? <laughs> um, the 500X is good on gas. It is. It's like 65 miles a gallon on that CB500X. That's another good thing about it. Let's see. Mr. GS48, I feel like I recognize you from a lot of comments. Thank you for your support. Um, Thirsty Fox says, do you have to deal with wind buffeting issues on most bikes? Yes. Um, yeah, wind buffeting is one of the thing, one of the most common issues on modern adventure motorcycles because of where the rider sits up high and the windshield, if they make the windshield super short, you you don't get you get all the bugs and rain on your head on your helmet if they make the windshield super tall you'd have to look through it nobody wants that so they put the windshield like right here and that creates wind buffeting and the the bike with the best wind management in my opinion is the gs adventure um it's it's very smooth Thank you, Tristan, for your donation. Tristan is a great friend of mine. We've been riding together for a long time. He's part of the Flying Monkeys. Thank you, Tristan, for that. Uh, let's see. Looking, J-Town says, first adventure break, should I get a 1,000 Africa Twin or the 1,100 Africa Twin? I would get start with the 1,000 and learn on that. Buy something cheaper that somebody's already maybe scratched a little bit or put the crash floors on. Save your money. Just get the 1,000. And then if you want to upgrade later to get the cruise control and more power, then you can get the 1100. But the Africa Twin 1000 is my favorite used adventure bike for the money still. Why have you, Tristan says, why have you never uh, had a Yam or done the Yamaha Super Tenere? Um, that's a good question. One, mostly because Yamaha doesn't give me bikes to review. So if Yamaha would work with me, I would do the Super Tenere. That'd be like the highest on my list to review. I have owned one. I've just never been able to. It was before YouTube when I had it, so I was never ever to do videos with it. Um, Old timer says, you know, uh, since you left a corporate type job, does your can you generate equivalent income or enough to continue? Um, it's a constant battle, and I don't want to talk specifics about money because people get weird about that. But yeah, I had a pretty high income expectation after I left my corporate job, and it's been hard to meet that. But when you diversify your income with YouTube ads, um, you know, affiliate sales, so when people shop at Revzill, I get a small commission. When you do all that really well, you can do okay and make, make a decent living. Um, but a channel like mine is never going to be like a super high earning channel. I could make videos in a way that would be more clickbait type that would get, you know, the sensational type of titles and thumbnails and content and be controversial and get a lot more views, but I don't want to do that. Like I want to be I want to be more serious and professional with the way I review bikes and create content. So because of that my channel will never grow as fast as some of the other ones out there. <coughs> John says, my wife wants to know why I don't keep our garage like you do. Um, yeah, the garage is so clean because I film in there quite a bit and I, I spend so much time in there, I just need it to be super organized. But like twice a year, I pull the cars out of the garage, pull the bikes out and go through everything. So everything comes out and gets organized. If I don't use something, it's got to go away. It's got to either be sold or donated or thrown out. I don't keep stuff around, so I can't deal with clutter. So if there's some if there's stuff in the garage I'm not using, it's gone. Like it needs to be free of clutter for me to work in there. Um, got some more questions here. Uh, I hate there's a Dave. I hate clickbait. Yep. Um, yeah, and I am happier making content that's not clickbait. That's true. I don't want to be. I don't want to contribute to the sort of you know swipeable content that social media is. Oh, I'm gonna make 15 second videos that you swipe through. I don't get that, you know, like 
that's that's just not what I what I do. Um, yeah, and I don't I don't want the I don't have like a strong personality or like I'm not good with humor on camera, so I'm not going to try to be entertaining. I'm just going to try to be informative, and I've learned that that's what my niche is here, and so I'm just going to go with that. Let's see, uh, more questions. Let me have a drink here. Cody says, I appreciate your, or Cooley says, I appreciate trying not to be a personality. Yeah, uh, let's see. Play to your strengths, I agree. Uh, Hans wants me to review the Himalayan. I'll try to. I'll try to do that. I'll try to review the Himalayan. I have access to some because my friends have them. Let's see. Uh, Chad, thank you for your donation, Chad. He says, given the higher seats that all these bikes have, what would, bike would you recommend for shorter riders that still has a lot of power? That's not the Harley Davidson. Oh, that is a really good question. Um, I will have to go to kind of BMW on that answer because what BMW does is whatever bike you want, like if you want an RT or a GS 1250 or an 850 GS, they will have the option to get a lower suspension from the factory that's designed to maintain the handling and it just lowers the bike so it's shorter springs and they have lower seats. So you can drop a couple inches off of any BMW bike with that stuff. Excuse me. So. BMW is one place to look. If you if you don't have to have an adventure bike, see that's the problem. Adventure bikes have to be tall because they have ground clearance and big suspension. But if you could go with a more sport touring or touring bike, like I just got off the K1600, it has like a 29 inch seat height and it has 160 horsepower, but and the seat's super low. But that's not an adventure bike, so I guess it's not going to help. Um, so yeah, look at BMW. Uh, but every, pretty much everything's gonna be in that 33 plus inch range. The KTM 890 Adventure, the standard Adventure, not the R, uh, but the standard Adventure, some people call it the S, that's around 32 and that's pretty good. And you can get a lower seat and lower it down to like around 31, 32 in that range. That bike has a ton of power. That bike is seriously fast. I know, cause I have one. So you should look at the 890 as well. Uh, I think Jonathan's trying to trying to troll me. KLR soft suspension. Yes, it does have soft suspension. Oh, for a lowered bike, that's true. Oh, you know what you should get? Either a KLR 650 because the suspension that you sink into it so far, or the best jet is the Honda CRF 300 Rally. That thing, it goes through about two thirds of its suspension just when you sit in it. I don't know how itchy boots. She must be like 100 pounds, but she, she seems to ride it um, really well. Oh, the, uh, yeah, Captain uh, Slack says the HD's active suspension works. I agree, uh, but he said, he, the other guy said he didn't want the Harley. Thank you, Pat, for your donation. I uh, really appreciate that. Thank you for your kind words. That means a lot. Uh, Jay Town says, I'm taking the VFR to work tomorrow because of the power. Yes, power is good. So I'd like to wrap this up in the next 10 minutes or so. So if anybody has any burning questions, um, now I'm kind of caught up. So now would be the time to, and if you're feeling generous, you can do a super chat. Um, so until some more questions come in, the uh, future content. So um, just a couple words about that. I, what you're seeing on the channel is I'm trying to diversify. I kind of started just by doing more adventure bikes and dual sports. I'm trying to diversify into all kinds of bikes. And I feel that's important to be well-rounded and to also grow the subscriber base to include all different kinds of bikes. But I'm always gonna have adventure bikes as my core specialty because that's what I have the most experience in. That's what I enjoy the most. Those are my bikes. And uh, yeah, so um, I wanna diversify the content as much as I can. I plan to do more buyer's guides type videos as well. 
But the, when they keep feeding me press bikes, like three, four, five bikes a month, that's keeping me so busy making the motorcycle videos. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Jesse says, what's in the freezer? Oh, we can't, we're not going to talk about that, Jesse. That's, that's where we store the bodies in there. That's why I have that big freezer. Uh, anybody who can makes a nasty comment on YouTube, they end up in the freezer there. Uh, which motorcycle channels do you follow? I follow just probably everything that you guys do. Like um, a lot of the channels from Europe I follow as well, like Missington Flyer and Moto Bob and uh, uh, Motorcycle Adventure Dirt Bike TV, Mad TV. I love that. Obviously, you know, uh, Revzilla, I like their content a lot. I, I follow everything because I, I have to keep track of what other people are, are talking about. But I like the I like the smaller channels too, and the other independent people. So obviously, Dork on the Road. I've been watching him for a long time. And we know each other. Um, I'm forgetting everybody else, but there's there's a ton of a ton of great channels out there. And if you if there's if there's a channel that you like what they're doing, make sure to subscribe, and you know support them if you can. Okay, so there's some questions here. Have you taken street bikes off road? Uh, yes. Um, I have. It's just not that much fun. What bike would you take on a multi-day trip with no backup and no cell coverage? Uh, Tenere 700 or a V-Strom 650. Something Japanese. Uh, if you're really going to be in the middle of nowhere with no support or riding around the world, I would not take a KTM or probably even a BMW. I would take, I would take a Tenere 700 because it'll never break down. Tenere 700s don't break down. Like, try to find one that's broken. Like, it's almost impossible. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Shadow, for your donation. I appreciate it. Why no Kickstarters on dual sports for backup? I don't know. I uh, Maybe they're being cheap. Maybe it's hard to engineer it. I don't know. I would like to see Kickstarters, but they've even taken them off all the modern KTMs, too. So they used to have them. My 2014 KTM 500 had a backup Kickstarter, and then the new ones don't, so I, I don't know. What features would make your ultimate adventure dream bike? Well, I pretty much have my dream bike with 890 Rally. I can't think of anything about the 890 Rally that I would really change, except maybe if it could somehow be more reliable, but um, it has all the features I want. Amazing suspension, cruise control, uh, no wind buffeting really to speak of once you make a few changes, comfortable seating, good ergonomics, um, a ton of power, great brakes, low center of gravity, comfortable to ride all day. And that's what my 890 rally is. So I've already got it. Do you ever go on rides with locals? Yes. Um, join, if you're in Southern California, join up with the Flying Monkey Adventure Riders on Facebook and we do rides all the time. Are you getting the Aprilia 660? I I don't know yet. Mr. Duff Factor <laughs> is in the freezer. Uh, see, what is the worst ADV on the market right now? Um, I I don't. Someone else asked this question tonight. Tonight I don't I don't even know. I can't even think of the answer to that. Uh, let's see. How do I improve the V-Strom 650 suspension for a big guy, 250 pounds? So I would, the best route to go usually is take the bike in or take the suspension into a suspension shop and they can revalve and respring the stock components for you. And if they can't do that, then go to a company like Tractive or Toratec or Olean's and get an aftermarket suspension, but make sure that they spring it for your weight. And when you do your weight, make sure you include your riding gear and your tools and stuff like that, too. Tiger 900 Rally Pro. I have a review on that. It's an amazing bike. One of one of my top midsize ADVs. I, it's a great bike. Fuel range of the T7 and the V-Strom. The T7 fuel range is around 200 miles. The V-Strom is around 250 miles. The V-Strom uses less gas and it has a bigger tank. One thing I don't like about the Tenere 700, 4.2 gallon tanks, too small. Uh, you should interview Itchy Boots. Yeah, maybe someday. I don't, I don't want to be one of those people that like messages her and stalks her and tries to get an interview. I'm sure everybody already does that, so I try to leave her, leave her alone, but maybe someday. Um, 
let's see, new DRZ coming soon. I hope so. That'd be amazing if they updated the DRZ. I'd buy one. If you could only have three bikes, well, three bikes, I would have a dual sport, like maybe a KTM 350 EXC. I'd have an adventure bike, the 890 Rally probably. And I'd have, I'd probably have like a, a naked bike, like a powerful naked bike, like either an 890 Duke or a Street Triple or Speed Triple or Ducati Monster or something because I like street riding and sport riding too. And something with a 17 inch front wheel that I could, that wouldn't hold me back on the street. Um, something like that. Uh, so one dual sport, one adventure bike, because the adventure bike you can also travel and tour on. And then I would have, yeah, like a sport bike, but not a, not a race bike, but like a naked bike or, or a sport tour. Uh, let's see. Favorite moto camping tent? You know, I have an REI tent that's a little bit, it packs a little bit larger than I'd like, but it's still pretty small. And it was 150 bucks. I think it's called the Passage. I used to have an REI camp dome. They pack pretty small. They're they're affordable. I don't, these tents that cost four or $500, I'm a little hesitant to spend $400 on a tent. So I don't know. Uh, but uh, Big Agnes makes some nice ones from bike packing. And so does uh, Nemo. Nemo makes some nice ones. Classic street bike, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've never been into older stuff very much. Uh, Jonathan Rosen, has turning your passion into the job lost some of the fun? Um, yes, yes, it has, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> Mr. GS48, does, will you do a review on the Desert X? I will try every... I will try all with all my might to get a Desert X for review from Ducati or someone who buys one. Um, and I may end up with one because I've, I've said that I want to buy a Ducati because I've never tried a Ducati, never had one. So maybe I'll buy it, but I really wanted to buy a Monster or a Hyper Motard instead of that. Yeah, some comments about the tents. REI Passage 2, I think that's what I have. The Nemo tents. Um, yeah. Okay, last call for last call for questions or super chat donations. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for being here, Dork in the Road. I appreciate your support and I love your channel. We all love your channel, man. And keep going. Do you just get discounts on new motorcycles as a YouTuber? Um, no, no, and I don't ask for them either because I just I just go in as a regular person. The dealerships don't know who I am, and that's I I do it that way for a reason. Um, and even if even if I did tell them who I was, they wouldn't give me a discount anyway. So, so I, I don't I don't play that game. I think that's very that's very like annoying to be that kind of person. Like oh you know, because I'm really not anybody to them anyway. Is joining Patreon helpful? Um, yes, Patreon is great. Because, uh, thank you, Jonathan, for that softball question. Um, I'll send you the check in the mail. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, Patreon's good because it's a monthly uh, support that helps me keep going. So, actually, running this business is a lot more expensive than you would think. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, did you just hit fifty thousand, Ben? Did you just turn over? That's amazing. That's awesome. I told you. Um, congratulations. That's really good. Okay, well, I'm going to start to wrap this up. If, if you're watching the recording and not watching it live, thank you for watching this channel. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being here. Um, this is only possible because of all of you and every all your contributions to this community and, and, uh, and all the other ways you support this channel. So I'm going to keep going and doing this as long as I can, as long as I can make it work. Thank you guys so much, uh, you know, for being a part of this community. It, it means a ton. And... I just feel it's such a privilege to be able to be doing this for my job. I just never would have imagined this. So it's hard work. It's stressful still, but um, I'm going to keep going. And it's because of all of you. So thank you. And uh, everybody, please, you know, if you're listening out there, ride safe, you know, present a good image as a motorcyclist. 
that's one thing I like to say, like be a good ambassador for, for motorcyclists everywhere. And uh, thank you guys all so much. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give this maybe one more minute so the chats come through and then I'm going to cut it off. But uh, thank you so much for watching and supporting. And yeah, I'm hungry. I need to go eat, eat some more dinner. <laughs> so, um, but stay tuned. I've got the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro review coming out. I've got the new CB500X. I've got the Suzuki uh, GSXX. I've got the 300 Rally. Pan America, Harley Pan America is coming in a few weeks to the channel. So we've got that. So yeah, a lot of good stuff to stay tuned for. Videos on 890 Rally, which haven't been released yet, and the Africa Twin too. So thank you all for your nice comments and for, for being here. I appreciate it. Yes, I do <laughs> the, ride the 890R in the desert. Absolutely. Especially when the desert cools down. Okay, we're going to end. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Um, who made... Oh, thank you, Jonathan, by the way, for your donation. I just, I'm sorry, I just saw that. You gave a very generous donation. Thank you, Jonathan. And Peter Livy. Oh, Peter Livian, $20. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> I know who that is. That's my, my brother-in-law. Thank you, Peter. And Sarah, if you're watching, and Laura, if you're watching, Brandon, all my family and friends, thank you guys for, for your support. Okay, we'll see you guys in the next video. We'll do another one of these live streams. They were a lot of fun. So thank you guys so much.